Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, good friends. I'm hopefully developing a few friendships in this program. One of the things I try and teach people in my performance coaching is, in effect, <laughs> you're always trying to build relationships. And, of course, we think business is about trying to make a profit, uh, sell a good, uh, sell a service, uh, get something accomplished, build a bridge. All of those are things that we have to do. But the way they do better work or we have better results is if we are in the business of also making good friends. And that's why uh, one of the programs that we are developing is called How to Make Good Friends and Serve Your Audience. And that's going to be an update, a brand new update of the classic bestseller by Dale Carnegie, which is entitled uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. But it's now a little bit different. So much of what Dale said 80 plus years ago is still very true. But the media has changed, the times have changed, the marketplace certainly has changed, and in many cases, people have changed. Maybe not for the best or good. So uh, how to make good friends and how to uh, serve your audience, because that's what we have to do to be successful in business today. So that's why the CQ, CQ, CQ was calling you to the program today. I would like to talk a little bit about FBD. A FBD was just made in uh, some of the work that I'm doing, and I feel bad about that. That's a feel-bad decision. Uh, FBD is a feel-bad decision, but there's more to FBD than a feel-bad decision, and I'll tell you what that is today because it's important. And then... I'm coming more and more to the point of view that email is beginning to kill a lot of our good stuff in life. Email is killing a lot of our good stuff in life. And I'd like to talk to you briefly about that today. The program is Interesting Ideas, hopefully to help you (laughs) be a little more interesting, hopefully be a, a lot less fearful Find a way to have a better life by uh, Good Ideas will give you insight, influence, impact, and good income so that you can live a good, full, and fully alive life. That's the deal for this program. That's what we hope for. Let's see if we can get part of that done today. The program begins right now. One of my friends called me and said, I I really enjoy the program, and I just, uh, I really enjoy listening to it. And I said, well, that doesn't make me happy. (laughs) He said, what do you mean it doesn't make you happy, Stan? I said, I don't want you just to listen to it. You're a smart, well-informed person. You have interesting ideas. Why don't you join me on the program from time to time? And he said, well, I I just, I never thought of it, and I'm kind of afraid of that. There's nothing to be afraid of. And by the way, if it doesn't scare you a little bit, it's probably not worth doing. If it doesn't scare you a little bit, it's probably not worth doing. And again, there's an old Stan Houston radio, uh, maybe significant statement. (laughs) Let it sit on your head for a while. No, an FBD is a fear-based decision. Uh, we had, uh, we were working on a project and we had to get some things done, some things we needed to change. And, uh, obviously these are tough times. These are difficult times. And, uh, the uh, decision probably required some changes and maybe a little bit more investment and time, energy, and money. And guess what? Fear kills everything and it has killed the project. Not now, no, maybe later, I don't know, Uh, i got to get the revenue now. And so uh, we have a fear-based decision. (laughs) And um, 
One of the things I have learned in life is once a person makes a decision, don't talk them out of it. If they're still seeking, discerning, and perhaps seeking a decision, fine. But once it's made, don't talk them out of it. Let them live with it and see what happens. Because if they get talked out of it, they have never fully embraced the new way of thinking. And as a result of that, we probably will not have the results we want. If someone threatens to quit, someone quits, you accept their resignation. (laughs) If someone threatens to quit, you say, good for you. I wish you all the best. You just did. Okay. Be bold, be brave, teach people to live with courage and opportunity, not only in the way you lead, but the way you communicate and the way you live. A feel-bad decision, a fear-based decision. Don't do that very often. (laughs) Try and do more uh, fear-less decisions, Hey, I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas. And uh, let me tell you just a few things about um, one of my pet peeves. and Not really a pet peeve, but kind of is. And maybe uh, just listening to me rant a little bit will be helpful to you in your understanding. Based on uh, 70 plus years of life, maybe it might be helpful for somebody who's even considerably younger. Let me tell you the rest of that story. Just give me about 10 more minutes and uh, I'll be done for today on this. uh, Hopefully, make it good. Make it not trivial. Make it a Trump Tuesday. It has nothing to do with Donald. That just simply says, you trump it. (laughs) You step forward and make some noise. You do something. You get the week going. You quit being kind of a morning Monday a minimal Monday by Tuesday, you're trumping it. All right, that's what we're going to do. Hey, I'll be right back. Uh, get a cup of coffee and uh, join me for uh, a few more minutes on interesting ideas. <music> You know, you've, that old line, it was going so well that we stopped doing it. You wouldn't believe how many times I've heard that story. P- people were doing something and it went well, but it was going all, you know. But, you know, it was the same old thing. Uh, and so they decided to do something new. And so it was going well, but they stopped doing it. <laughs> all right. Many years ago, I uh, I don't know why. I just, you know, I... I decided that I was going to sit down, and my daughters had now left home, and uh, uh, email was just beginning. We'd be in touch, and obviously a telephone is <laughs> very there. I decided to sit down and uh, write them a letter, a personal handwritten letter, and I was going to do it every week. And I made it very clear to them that they didn't have to respond back. They didn't even have to acknowledge it. They didn't have to answer it. Uh, They didn't even have to say thank you. All I was going to do was write them a letter. And I did. And I did it for a long time, but then life caught up with me, and we made a number of moves, and they made a number of moves, and uh, life took its twists and turns, and I kind of fell out of the habit. Well, right now, a number of years later, As we're going through the turmoils of life right now, uh, I decided that it was time to do that again. And so I uh, (laughs) went out and got some very nice stationery, card size, not just not a big, you know, just a little nice, very nice note card and nice stationery. And um, I've started the practice once again of writing a little handwritten, no, handwritten note to my daughter's. And I put it in an envelope and put a nice stamp on it, one that kind of is something that I like. 
and I send it off. Do they respond? Not really. Not very much. Um, but what I've heard, and they really admitted it to me the other day when I actually apologized because I got so taken up. I usually write it on Saturday or Sunday and then send it out, and here it was a day or two late. And my daughter writes back, I really love your letters, Dad. I really love your letters, Dad. Now, I really don't say that much. It's, <laughs> it's kind of just small talk, always closed with love and best wishes. But I remember one of uh, Harvey McKay, How to Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive, had said the key to success is to write a personal note to somebody who's good, maybe significant, has done something for you. Write a handwritten personal note every day. Have a stack of cards and a stack of envelopes on your desk and have a nice pen and write a nice note and just mail it. I'm beginning to think uh, that's a good thing to get back into. So I just passed that on and uh, I'm trying to do that more and more now. And um, obviously it's quite a bit old fashioned. Most people don't get uh, letters in the mail much anymore, but we do appreciate that. And it does seem to make a difference. Now, here's the email thing. Oftentimes, what I say is, in effect, stop texting, stop typing, please talk to me. Put down the phone. No, put down the typing Put down that instrument and pick up the telephone. <laughs> now, you're fortunate because that could be both now. Instead of texting, why don't you make a phone call? Why don't you just call them? Now, a couple things for this. What I have found is that um, it's tougher to be tough when you're talking. If you want to tell somebody something, you can type it out and you can be fairly rough and rugged in it. But you see, there's <laughs> not the human touch or sound to it. And so what can happen is we tend to have less behavior that is positive, supportive, and good when we can uh, type and text. When we know that they can respond and they will respond right away, and they know that we then, once we say something to them, that they have the opportunity to come right back to us, either to change our mind, argue with us, or correct us, or challenge us, or whatever it might be, if we know that we have to talk, rather than text or type, we do better work in terms of communicating. I oftentimes tell people an email is for information. It's good for that. Talking is vital for communication. So from now on, Always ask yourself the question, will this have more impact if right now I'll just pick up the telephone and talk? Now, I also am dealing with a situation in which the exchange of emails, because it could be exchanged that way, has led to a fractured relationship, a severely fractured relationship. And as I read the series of emails that led to it, I couldn't help but think, you know what? 
if they didn't do it this way, if they had actually talked about it, somewhat face-to-face, certainly, eyeball-to-eyeball, that would help, Uh, person-to-person, even on the phone, I think we might have had a very different result. But because it was put in print, because the button was pushed, and because it was read, and then it was thought about, and that caused a brewing and a stirring and a thinking that did not lead to reconciliation or repentance or repair. It led to a stronger but truthful response. And as a result, I am very much afraid that some very severe, maybe permanent damage has been done. Please keep that in mind. Information, email. Communication, talk. And never, never give a person bad news or negative news in an email. Never. Don't do that. I have been... You know, I've received that. I never would do that. If I'm going to give you bad news, if I'm going to say something that breaks, you know, it's a tough word. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to say it to them. They're going to hear it from me, and they can respond. I have a friend, and he always said this, uh, the only surprise I want is a pleasant one. Well, on a couple of occasions, I've gotten some very unpleasant news, and two things happened. (laughs) It was texted and typed, and it was a surprise. I not only didn't hear them say it, they texted it and typed it, and it was unexpected. Don't Do that. Thank you for listening to my radio rant today. I hope it might have been helpful to you. One of the reasons I like to talk is because it allows me to express emotion and expression and energy and personality, and then you have to deal with it and perhaps be enhanced by it or maybe enraged by it. But then we can work it out. So please remember, please remember, I'm Stan Houston, Interesting Ideas. I'm in the business of helping you lead a better life, and I believe I can help you. Please reach out to me at stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. And we have lots of things with the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience, what we call the Issachar Project, and how to be a world-class podcaster. And that's what I'm going to do as soon as I'm done with this radio program, teach people how to be a world-class podcaster. And maybe I'll show that video to you someday. Take care. Best and blessings. Till tomorrow. Bye for now.